Welcome to Ark Lore Part 1. Out of the hundreds of thousands of people who play Ark, not a lot of people actually know the lore or the story of the game. So today I'll be answering the question, where did it all begin? To understand that, you need to know what this little guy is. This is Element. The best way I can think of describing it is if plutonium and a zombie virus had a baby. It's full of energy, but it kind of has a mind of its own and can get out of control. So what does Element have to do with anything? Many years before you wake up naked on an island, these guys on Earth in the 22nd century discovered how to use tech to make advanced technology. And with an energy source like Element came advanced weapons, space technology, genetic research, you name it. Because of what you could do with it, Element was considered highly valuable. People became super greedy and a massive war broke out. This war was between the United Earth Republic and the Terran Federation. The war became so intense and destructive that they completely destroyed Earth and it got taken over by Element. Welcome to Ark Lore Part 2. Today we'll be answering the question, what is Ark? Or probably more accurately, what are the Arks? One thing you'll want to remember about Ark's lore is that it takes a lot of its references from modern day theology and old mythology. So the Ark is almost exactly what it sounds like. It's an Ark. Do you remember that huge war over Element that basically destroyed the Earth as we know it and got the whole Earth infected with Element? Now the Arks with their obelisks and dinosaurs and amazing creatures were created before this extinction level event to preserve life. The Arks also have a couple other functionalities such as testing and preparing survivors to re-inhabit the Earth, as well as terraforming capabilities to get rid of the Element infection down on Earth. And where are the Arks? Well, they're actually in orbit over the Earth, and there are thousands of them. As you can see from this screenshot in the Ascension cinematic, each one of these glowing dots is one of the arcs orbiting the Earth. Now the original idea was for the arcs to come down to Earth, get rid of the element, and repopulate. But a few things went horribly wrong, and we'll talk about that in another video. Hello survivors, this is Ark Lore Part 3. Today's question that we'll be answering is, who is a survivor and what's your role in the game? As many of you already know, at the beginning of the game, you wake up stranded and alone on a beach somewhere, wondering, what is this thing in your arm? And then about two seconds later, a raptor or someone on a raptor comes and eats you, but then you just respawn? How does that fit into the story? To understand all that, you need to know where you came from. Did you survive the huge apocalyptic war on the Earth and now you're just living on the Ark? Yes and no. You see, around the same time that the Ark technology was being developed, they also found a hidden part of the brain that stored someone's information or memories long after they were dead. In Ark lore, this is referred to as the Engramic Matrix. Basically, they used this technology to download the minds of people from Earth's history. It's also thought that they chose specific people with certain abilities who were potential candidates to become Homo Deus. Whether or not you become a Homo Deus is kind of the point of the test that the Arcs put you through. So basically, your mind is uploaded to the Ark, which is why you're able to respawn and it can make a new body for you when you die. Hello, survivors, and welcome to Ark Lore Part 4. Now, we've talked about a lot of stuff, but we've barely scratched the surface. And some of you guys might be wondering, where am I finding all of this lore? Like, where does the story come from? Which is why today's question is, what are Explorer Notes? Explorer Notes are not just ways to get extra experience and level up your character. If you actually read them, they actually contain about 99% of Ark's lore. The Explorer Notes come from noteworthy survivors who were on that map or that arc before you got there. Some of the most important characters in the story are survivors like Helena Walker. This is actually her in the cover art of Ark. Sir Edmund Rockwell, who is kind of a D-bag. Mei Yin Lee, who tames dinosaurs and is a total bad A. As you can see, there are also a ton of other important characters, but I don't have time to cover them all in one video. But all you need to know right now is that Helena Walker, Mei Yin, and Diana are super cool. And Nerva and Rockwell totally suck, and you guys are going to hate them when I explain more about their story. In the meantime, go read some Explorer notes. They're not just there for experience. Alright, survivors, this is Ark Lore Part 5. Actually, this will be more like part 5.1, because today we'll be covering the story of the island through the eyes of Helena Walker. So who is Helena? She's a biologist who used to live in Australia before, obviously, the world was destroyed, and she woke up on the island at some random point just as confused as everyone else. Helena was a kind soul who loved to study animals, and she quickly made friends with tribes like the Howling Wolves, the scientist Edmund Rockwell, who wasn't a total douchebag yet, and the Painted Sharks, who liked riding megalodons. She's also one of the few people that befriended the Beast Queen of the Jungle also known as super swordsman dead-eye glaring Mei Yin Li. As a side note, Helena also liked to ride around the island on Athena. Athena was an Argentavis given to Helena by none other than Sir Edmund Rockwell. Now, while Helena was adventuring around making discoveries about different dinosaurs and animals, and writing those dossiers that you guys use to learn about the creatures on Ark, Helena noticed that some things were just completely off. Helena was the first to realize that this wasn't an ecosystem, it was a zoo. 
Hello survivors, welcome to Ark Lore 5.2 and things are just starting to get interesting. So Helena goes over to Rockwell and is like, hey, I think this place is like a zoo. And Rockwell says, yeah, 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 Helena, that's cool, but I was spelunking the other day and I found this super cool artifact. And it seems to match with the markings on one of the obelisks, so we're gonna go test it out. And this is about the time that we meet the Iron Legion. Rockwell commissions the Iron Legion to help him find the rest of the artifacts to see if he can activate one of the obelisks. But unfortunately, the Iron Legion was not prepared for what came next. After activating the obelisk, they were attacked by a giant spider. Now, they were able to kill the spider, but they suffered heavy losses. Excited but a little frightened by these discoveries, Helena enlists the help of Mei Yin Li with the second obelisk. They find more artifacts in cave and activate the next obelisk to find a giant ape. Now, Helena's scared to death, but Mei Yin Li does not back down. She takes that thing head on with her dino army and comes in clutch. Things are looking up until Helena and Mei Yin get ambushed by the new Legion. Hello Survivor, this is Ark Lore, part 5.3. Today we'll be finishing up the story of the island from the perspective of Helena. After Helena and Mei Yin defeated the Megapithecus, things were looking pretty good. But that's when the new Legion attacked. They absolutely slaughtered Mei Yin's dinosaur army and took Helena and Mei Yin captive. But who is the new Legion? The new Legion was a group of some of the toughest survivors on the island. Their leader, Gaius Marcellus Nerva, who was a Roman centurion in his previous life. While imprisoned with the new legion, Helena is forced to help them find the remaining artifacts. Nerva and his soldiers find the rest of the remaining artifacts, activate the obelisk, only to find this fire-breathing dragon. But these guys don't mess around. They chopped this guy's head off and brought it back as a trophy to show Helena. With all of their trophies and artifacts, they head off to the mysterious cave that Rockwell found a long time ago. Mei Yin freed Helena, and they followed the new legion through the portal, only to find most of the new legion dead surrounded by mysterious pieces of metal. Over a minor disagreement about Nerva, Mei Yin knocks Helena out. Helena wakes up in a space station with no sign of anyone except for a few drops of blood. Hello Survivor, welcome to Ark Lore Part 6. In this video we'll be covering the story of the island as told by Rockwell. So who is Sir Edmund Rockwell? Well, he would describe himself as a stupendous scholar, gallant gentleman, and explorer extraordinaire. But most of the people on the island just know him as the scientist who started making interesting recipes out of the weird plants and animal products on the island. Now things start to get interesting for Rockwell when other tribes start complaining about the new legion. In an attempt to make peace, Sir Edmund Rockwell meets with Gaius Marcellus Nerva, but instead of convincing him to back down and leave the other tribes alone, they actually become really good friends. Soon after this, he goes on a spelunking excursion just to get away from it all and discovers this interesting cave, as well as other interesting artifacts that match the obelisks, and so begins his obsession. He then officially teams up with Nerva, who also has an interest in the obelisks. After witnessing the destruction of Mayan's dino army, Rockwell becomes very suspicious of Helena, thinking that she was trying to go behind his back. With all the artifacts, Rockwell joins Nerva in unlocking the cave portal. After witnessing the massacre, this is what he has to say about it. Hey Survivor, this is Arklore Part 7. Today we'll be talking about who exactly is Mei Yin Li and what happens to her during the island story. First off, she's probably one of the most relatable people in the story because she starts her notes from when she first arrives on the island. At first, she's literally a beach bob surviving off of dodos. However, after saving a village from a raider with her trusty bow, they teach her how to tame raptors. She names her first raptor companion Wu Zui, and they become the best of friends. In time, she tames a lot more dinosaurs and becomes like a mercenary for hire. And she ends up defending a lot of the smaller tribes from the new legion. And in case you forgot, those are these a-holes. One of her most notable accomplishments was being the first person to tame the Demon King. Now we already know about her adventures with Helena, so let's skip ahead a little. Following the ambush from the new legion and the massacre of her dinos, she barely escaped with Wuzui. But sadly, his wounds were too great, and she watched her trusted friend die in her arms. Thoroughly pissed off, she vows revenge on Nerva. Now let's get forward just a bit. After knocking out Helena, she fights Nerva. But after Mei Yin wounds him, like a coward, he runs away into the dark. Hey Survivor, this is Ark Lore, Part 8. Today we'll be covering the story of Helena on the Desert Ark. So once Helena wakes up after being knocked out by Mei Yin, she notices that she's all alone in a mysterious space station. So she starts fidgeting around with the panels, trying to get them to work, and accidentally sends herself to the Desert Ark of Scorched Earth, which definitely would not have been my first choice. After surviving mostly on her own by drinking water from water-carrying bugs, she finally meets some friendly tribes, who warn her never to go out in the desert sand or she might become worm food. Literally. She's the one that makes the observation that every arc seems to have a natural barrier of some sorts to keep people from reaching the edge. On the island, it was the water, and on scorched earth, the death worms. Now, Helena has some close calls while she's in the desert. When a villager comes back screaming that the rocks are alive, she meets a very tall and very angry rock elemental. Now, right before this guy was about to crush her, a bolt of lightning struck him in the face. This is when Helena sees a mysterious rider on a lightning wyvern who saved her life. And this won't be the last time that happens, but more on that in the next Ark Lore video. Hello Survivor, this is Ark Lore, part eight and a half. 
So last time we left off with Helena in Scorched Earth, and she was saved from an attack by a rock elemental by a mysterious wyvern rider. Now at this point, Helena's been separated from her group, and now she's surviving in the desert on her own. She's doing pretty well though, because she learned that the Morella Tops has a water sack on it where she can get drinkable water. And she makes friends with a cute furry animal that can detect when the weather is about to change. And that's why she names him Radar. She then discovers a small but thriving settlement on the other side of the desert. And they agree to provide her with food and shelter as long as she helps out doing some manual labor. She's never been much of a warrior before, but they have guns and they teach her how to shoot a rifle. But her newfound peaceful living is completely destroyed when they receive word that a pack of giant mantises are coming to eat everybody. They're able to hold off the mantises from the city wall with their rifles, but they're running low on ammo and they know they can't last forever. But just when Helena's about to give up hope, the mysterious wyvern rider shows up again and burns the mantises to a crisp. And so our story continues. Hello Survivor and welcome to Ark Lore Part 8 and 3 quarters. Or in other words, this is the end of Part 8. So after the wyvern rider burns all the mantises and saves everyone, Helena decides that if she's ever going to find a way off of this desert arc, then she should probably get to meet this mysterious rider. After searching in the desert for days, Helena spots the wyvern rider land atop the tallest mountain. So Helena sets off with her Morelatops and Radar to go find this mysterious person. All the while, Helena's kind of hoping this might be Mei Yin. Because remember, she still has no idea what happened to Mei Yin Li, and who else could tame such savage beasts. Disappointingly, Helena does not find Mei Yin Li, but an old woman named Rhea. Helena and Rhea quickly form an alliance, partially thanks to Rhea's love of this little guy. Rhea teaches Helena how to ride a wyvern, and it turns out Rhea might actually know how to get Helena off the Ark. On their way to the portal cave, they encounter none other than Edmund Rockwell. And of course, Helena's super excited to see him because she thinks she's seeing an old friend. And of course, Rockwell doesn't really mention his involvement with Nerva. And so the two friends travel off of Scorched Earth together. Hey, welcome to Ark Lore Part 9. If you thought the story was crazy before, just you wait. Today I'll be telling you the story of Aberration from the viewpoint of Helena. Now we left off last time at the end of Scorched Earth with Helena and Rockwell transferring to another arc. Helena kind of just wanted to go back to the island, but Rockwell had other ideas in mind. And even though Helena didn't necessarily agree with Rockwell's plan to go somewhere different, she decided to go with him because she'd rather be with a friend. Which brings us now to Aberration. Now right off the bat, Helena could tell this was very different from the desert she just lived in. There was a lot of moisture, everything was underground, and there were these bioluminescent plants and animals. And after seeing her first roll rat, Helena starts to think that the creators of the arcs might have been human. Because she can tell that all the creatures here are modeled after real animals or mythological creatures. Except these guys, she's not really sure what those are. Helena decides to call these annoying creatures squid-faced bats. And her and Rockwell just keep getting attacked by them. And after the second attack, Helena ran out of ammunition. But when they're attacked a third time, they were saved by a person wearing glowing armor. Behind the visor, Mei Yin Li. Hello Survivor and welcome to Ark Lore Part 10. Today we'll be talking about what Mei Yin Li was doing after the events of the island. So what exactly happened? Well, Mei Yin Li fought Nerva. Then her sword got stuck in one of the terminals, and when she went to pull out the sword, the machine transported her to another arc. She ended up on the surface of Aberration. Mei Yin realizes she needs to get the heck out of there and find shelter when she sees that Nerva's body is starting to burn. Because direct contact with the sun on this arc can be deadly. Like Helena, Mei Yin is awed by this beautiful landscape, but she doesn't let that take her off her guard because she can smell the stench of dangerous creatures nearby. To summarize Mei Yin's adventure, she meets a lot of nasty creatures, but surviving gets a little bit easier when she meets this little guy. Because the creatures of the dark don't seem to like the light that comes off of this little guy's horns. Mei Yin's first tame is a ravager, but after meeting big crabs and invisible dragons, she decides it's time to upgrade. Using her bow skills and her ravager, Mei Yin is able to conquer the beast. But unfortunately, Mei Yin loses her Ravager companion in the process. Soon after, Mei Yin realizes she might not be alone when she sees a pair of boot prints. Hello Survivor, this is Ark Lore, Part 11. Today we'll be continuing the story of Mei Yin Li on Aberration. While Mei Yin was riding around the caverns on her rock trip, she came across some interesting footprints that looked too far apart to be human, but the boot prints were human. She then came across a bunch of people wearing this glowing armor. Mei Yin was a little standoffish at first, but a woman named Diana convinced her to go back with them to their village. Turns out it wasn't a village, it was a city. And everything Mei Yin saw was made out of this glowing metal, even the beds. To abbreviate this part of the story, Mei Yin Li becomes sort of a stable master in their society. And Diana convinces Mei Yin to start learning how to use the tech armor. Not surprisingly, Mei Yin Li is a fast learner. However, disaster strikes when Diana decides to go on an expedition into the deeper caverns. Diana's mission involved finding pieces to a machine they were building that she said was very important. So Diana and her team took off into the deepest, darkest caverns with their rock drakes and tech suits. But Mei Yin Li becomes concerned when over a day has passed and no one has returned. So Mei Yin suits up her rock drake with tech armor and heads into the dark to find her new friend. 
Hello, Survivor. This is Arclore, part 12. We're just going to hop right into it. We left off with Mei Yin Lee riding her rock trick on her way to the deepest, darkest caverns to find out what happened to Diana and her party. Things started looking bad when Mei Yin discovered the bodies of Diana's comrades scattered around the floor. It looked like there had been several large fights as Mei Yin continues to keep finding bodies. Shortly thereafter, Mei Yin arrived on the scene just in time to save Diana and one other survivor from this monstrosity that Mei Yin has no words for. Barely alive and with her comrade wounded, Diana says she can't leave without getting what she came here for. So Mei Yin decides that after they rest up, she will help Diana find that piece of the machine she was looking for. Did I say rest? Ha, <laughs> you thought. Because while trying to rest and collect their things, the other wounded guy starts convulsing. And then a baby monstrosity bursts out of his chest. Thankfully, Mei Yin's warrior instincts save the day again. To make a long story short, they do find what they're looking for, but they are once again ambushed by a bunch of reapers. In the midst of the chaos, Mei Yin Lee had to leave her rock drake companion behind, and so they flee to the sound of their companion's dying roars echoing behind them. This story is pretty crazy, so I might have to do it in two different videos. Anyway, this is Arc Lore Part 13. Let's get right into it. Let's skip ahead to when Mei Yin Lee saves Helena and Rockwell from the flying squid bat thingies. These scary dudes. Helena was not only surprised to see a person wearing some glowing metal armor, but also to find out that it was Mei Yin Lee. So of course, Mei Yin tells Helena and Rockwell the story of everything that's happened since she came to Aberration. Helena meets Diana and all the other tech survivors and is very impressed by the interesting technology they have going on. But Rockwell could care less about making friends. He's just very interested in the technology. This is about the time that we see that Rockwell is getting a little too obsessed with Element. Helena thought Rockwell was acting a little strange, but she doesn't think too much into it. Because Rockwell's always been kind of a studious, experimental kind of guy, so this is probably just one of his new toys. Helena does become concerned, however, when the tech survivors start describing a new portal that they're building. If you've played on the Aberration map, this is the portal they built. They reveal to Helena and Mei Yin that they're building a portal so that they can get back down to the surface of the Earth. But Helena's the only one that knows why this could be dangerous. Arc Lore Part 13 continued. If you missed the last one, go back and watch it. So why is Helena worried about the tech survivors building a portal to get down to the Earth? It had a lot to do with a story she heard from Reyna back on Scorched Earth. If you don't remember, Reyna was the wyvern riding lady. Helena also gave her radar before they left Scorched Earth. Now, Reyna has a really long story, but to summarize, there was once a very big, very powerful city on Scorched Earth. This civilization was starting to grow very big and become more technologically advanced. But one day, the obelisks started glowing and humming very loudly. At the time, Reyna thought they had upset the gods because, after a bright flash from the obelisks, the ground underneath the big city completely collapsed and everybody died. And Helena believes this might have been because the inhabitants of the Ark were getting too out of control. And what sounds more out of control than tech survivors building a portal to get back to Earth? After Helena told this story to the tech survivors, they agreed to go investigate some of the obelisks on the surface. As it turns out, these tech survivors have hacked into the system before and tweaked a few things. But in order to do it again, they'll have to wait till nighttime and go up to the dangerous surface. Hello Survivor, this is Arclore part 14. If you haven't seen all the other Arclore videos, be sure to go back and watch them because there's no way I could summarize it all in this one video. After listening to the warnings from Helena, a scientist of the tech survivors named Santiago decides to go with Mei Yin and Helena to go check out the obelisk. They all became very alarmed when they noticed that the obelisk was behaving very strangely. Even the ground around the obelisk was starting to shake from time to time. Santiago couldn't shut down the obelisk from here, so he opened up a portal to the command center inside Aberration. The command center they arrived in seemed pretty similar to what Helena had seen on the island, but they needed to go deeper to hack into the system. And this is about the time they passed through a huge cavern full of human and other creature embryos. Helena had long suspected that she was an imitation of herself and grown on the Ark, but she'd never actually seen it up close. Mei Yin also seemed pretty upset by the scene because she stopped talking after that. Santiago was able to hack into the system and shut down the obelisks, but just as he finished, the Ark's defense system kicked in and a bunch of Reapers started coming after them. So they blasted the control panel and got the heck out of there. So far so good. Welcome to my series where I tell you the lore on video games. Today's lore is Arc Lore Part 15. Now if you haven't seen parts 1 through 14, I definitely recommend watching those. We left off with Mei Yin, Helena, and Santiago heading back to the tech village. On their way back through the caverns, they got a distress call from the village. A lot of people were yelling and screaming and they couldn't really make out what people were saying. All Helena heard was Rockwell's name and something about danger. Worried about their friends Rockwell and Diana, they pick up the pace. What they found was absolute destruction. There were dead bodies everywhere and they got there just in time to see a large violet colored hulking figure disappear into the other cavern. Sadly, Diana was also gravely wounded and she dies of her wounds. But right before she died, she was able to tell them what the monster was. Sir Edmund Rockwell. The lunatic decided to inject himself with Element. Helena was absolutely distressed and very worried about her friend Rockwell. But Mei Yin was pissed. She gathered together all of her creatures and went after Rockwell. After a huge battle that shook the entire Ark, they defeated Rockwell by shoving him down a huge fissure in the floor. Overwhelmed and so done with the Arks, they finished the portal and headed to Earth. 